what we try to do is we try to understand uh, things, random things that depend on space and time. So take a cup of tea, pour some milk into it and stir it around and well so now you're going to see some random pattern mm -hmm. of the milk in your tea and you can ask and the milk is going to mix. Right? So after a while the milk is just going to be evenly spread in your cup of tea. You can ask yourself how fast how long does that take? Right? So can you really show that it mixes around very well and that there's no way that you can recover uh, you know, information about how you actually poured the milk in if you wait for long enough. And would that be a case of almost like every time you do it, you're going to get a different... Right. Like, is, is that the idea? You're right, you'll always out. get something different, right? Yeah. So you can't, you can't expect to just predict exactly what you're going to see because you you see something different every time mm -hmm. and it will depend on how exactly you pour it in and what exactly things look and like. And that's and where... And there's absolutely no way you can... And so that's mm -hmm. where you use randomness to model this. And how would we even begin to model randomness? Okay, so things are random, so you cannot say which outcome you'll see, but you can say which outcome would be more likely than which other outcome, right? So you can see, well, most of the time you would see something like this, mm -hmm. and it's pretty unlikely that you would see something else. Right? And then you can quantify what you mean by pretty unlikely. If you toss a coin, you toss mm -hmm. a coin 10 times, yeah, and you, ask, you say, how many heads do you see? Well, of course, I can't tell you in advance how many heads you'll see. But I can tell you that it's more likely that you see five rather than mm -hmm. two. So I was going to mention the coin example because I think the fact that there are two outcomes makes it relatively easy to think, right, well, it's probably a 50-50 chance. Mm -hmm. But with something like pouring milk into a tea and what pattern does that... Surely there are so... almost like an infinite number of outcomes. Sure, yeah, but you can... Uh, you can model things with infinite number of outcomes. Like, for example, if you you just say pick any number between 0 and 1. Well, there are infinitely many numbers between mm -hmm. 0 and 1. Uh, but we can still make mathematical sense of what it means to pick them with equal probability, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Even though there's infinitely many of them, so of course each one of them will be picked with zero probability. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, but you can, still, you can still give a mathematical meaning to this. And is this related to your, the work that you did to um, be awarded with your Fields Medal um, in 2014? Yes, it's related yeah. to that to some extent, yes. Yeah. I mean, I imagine it was, of course, a great privilege to have your work recognised as sort of, you know, one of the top levels mm. that you recognition you can receive as a mathematician. Were you, I guess, excited or...? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did, did you know that this no, was sort of coming, or was it just out of the blue, or...? Well, you get told six months before. So okay. <laughs> that's, why I, that's why I knew half a year before. Yeah. But, but before, you know, before, I guess, was it a phone call? I mean, before you were told then, did, did you have an idea, or had people mentioned it, or was it... Were you just sort of so concentrated on just doing your maths that... There were... I had some people asking me and mm -hmm. some people mentioned it and so, you know, so you have, but, you know, I mean, these things are also random to some extent, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, they pick up four people, but they, among the, there are a dozen other people that, whose work was just as good. Yeah, as much as we tend to be very humble, so yeah, <laughs> you've, you've fulfilled the stereotype of Martin.